Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to bring time online. Welcome to the 2024 Data Challenge. Brought to you by the Texas AI Institute of Data Science. My name is Lee Dockin, I'm the director of the Institute. And um, this, uh, this whole convocation is a uh, support of our collaborating team, which will work on the later, and collaborating organizations, which will share more of the collaborating general support. Part of the statistics and the part of the So, the competitors as well. Um, 166 of you have registered. 101 of graduate students, graduates. And uh, for the 51 teams, 37 graduate teams in 24 graduate. So the graduate team is teaching at least one graduate student at the end. So this graduate team, you can see the team, it's like two things. So it's the distribution of team size. We have the, all the way from the five member maximum down to one member teams. And so we have had um, winning teams as one member in the past. So that's how we um, working around the having a lot of access to the generation. So we've always liked to see the variety of issues in the team that is set, the team that is based on strongly, sort of, so the data, see, variety, most popular, and then there are So here's the organizing team. In case it is time to sit and build the program engagement, these are a lot of uh, the, the, uh, the organization involved in this event and competition. Every year, the competition has a theme, and this year, the theme is uh, we have to see what we're rising. And uh, we benefit greatly from participation on the teams on some panels. This year we have data training, this is the key search and access to photography, and then we get more pictures. GitHub is a system for Pepper, and it also is a digital final, and we're also a system director of product development, and it's um, and team that we talk to about based on schools. Downfall and Housing has all been associated with the with the competition, the East Asian Army to one. So, what was the education is that it could be counted in two. The structural research is passing into physics, the digitalization, and in terms of actually making everything happen in the digital organization, Jennifer South and Andy Rollins. Outside the mid, um, um, make sure everything works. So, again, thanks to our sources, uh, Chevron's being all the time, and um, their um, so in, in addition to helping us uh, with the competition, with the sources of all this, also participated in our finest event for. So here's my session. Again, I hand over to uh, Drew, who's going to talk about the logistic aspects of the degree of communication. Um, Jason is going to talk in detail about uh, the niche challenge and in detail about how to access and utilize the data sets. Darren will be talking about what he's doing with uh, the innovation, and Jason will be talking about tools and libraries. Darren, I'll wrap it up with data. So, we're going to do it.
Like I said earlier, it is open ended. Um, you just have to identify your metrics, the relevant metrics that you want to utilize. You determine how you're going to present that information to the end user, and then also who that end user is. And then what kind of recommendations or results come from that analysis? What's the next step? It's not enough just to have a pretty graphic, but what does that graphic tell the end user to do or what action it takes? There are all other events happening during competition that are related. We have office hours. Uh, Jane Powell is going to offer these office hours to help competitors get their projects if you for advice. Um, person about specific issues. We also will have a workshop and QA. This will be online. You can get all of the Zoom links and, and details about the events on the Canvas page under the events tab. But then we also have that have Canvas had ongoing events. We have workshops and tutorials all the time that you can join up. If you haven't joined our uh, listserv, our Google group, if you go to the website, top of the page is this, uh, join the mail group, and we send out like a weekly newsletter about all the things that we're doing and, and some helpful things that are happening outside of the campus. Your final report can be up to 10 pages, uh, 10 point error font, quantity charges, and then it has to be a PDF format. As all good reports, it should be self contained. It should be, uh, meaning, I shouldn't have to read other things in order to get the required information from your report. We will supply a rubric later that will be online. And then when you go to submit your report, you'll go to Canvas and it will be one of the assignments. That will be available later. You can submit it early if you want, but remember the deadline is April 4th. Put in your report, you need the executable code. Um, and then any other supplementary materials that you want to include. We do offer a prize for supplementary, the best. Like I said, the deadline is April 4th at 11 15 p.m. through Canvas. We will then announce the finalists. And the finalists have to prepare a 10 minute presentation that we will give on the, at the final event of Thursday, April 18th. This 10 minute presentation will go over what you're planning and, and talk about how you did your project, what the impacts are, why does anyone care about it, and then there'll be about five minutes for QA from our, our judges. And then that night, we will announce the winners of, of the different prizes. You're welcome to, to join online or, or present in person, it's up to you. I will say though, we will have snacks as well. So if you are virtual on that day, then you won't have access to our delicious snacks. It's like you're having delicious snacks right now. Sorry, because you've had a control wrong Trying to make you jail from So uh, right now I'm gonna uh, turn it over to uh, Dr. Curry. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about sea level rise and how to access the preliminary data. Thank 
we uh, we we are able to get the data only at the post location. So we won't give you a complete picture. The data report is long, but there could be gaps in between. But it doesn't give you a full picture of the operation part of the signal is affecting the post region or any other way of like. So So the gray line here shows the monthly data because of the phase of cycle. And the red line shows a linear picture. So in this graph here shows that the serial is rises from 6.78 meters in 1900s to about 7.5 meters in 2021. So this uh, data measured by this uh, time case shows every single contribution to the system of strength. So if the land is aside, that also can contribute to the system of strength. If the water level is increasing due to ice by glacier melting, that also can contribute uh, to the uh, system of climate variation here. So the tide gauge measurement includes the contribution to the sea level from any single force that we can think of. And to give a bigger perspective, the estimated, the projected value is 0.6 meter sea level rise between 2030 and 2100 if the emissions are at current level, depending how the gas emissions are at the current level. If we don't have the current emissions, which is going up to 1.1 meters to 2.1 meters. So this is a situation that we face if the greenhouse of emissions are not current. So the CO2 is going to rise even if the uh, emissions are kept at the current volume. So that's the background to which we should use these kind of data sets to come up with the solution for our users. So let's go into the uh, details. What all mechanisms can contribute to the system? Uh, I change. So one is ocean circulation. Suppose uh, the ocean currents which uh, move the water around in the ocean changes its strength. Then the amount of water transported to a particular region will decrease or increase according to the uh, strength of the current. So it is interesting or different. So that's what contributes to the uh, case of society through ocean subjects. And the second factor is ocean warming. So of the greenhouse gas, so the global warming, the ocean water also will warm. Once the water is uh, lighter, it will expand. So that itself can contribute to sea level rise. Now, if the land is staying still, but the uh, water is warming, then it will become lighter and that will decrease the density and that itself can go to the increase of height. So a warming warming that can melt the ice sheet and glaciers. So those water is stored in glaciers and ice sheets can run off to the ocean and that can increase the sea level. So the third part is the air sea impact. So as the winds and pressure systems move around, that also will exert an impact on the ocean surface, which can also contribute to the uh, sea level height. So another part is vertical land wash. So land, uh, even though it doesn't appear to be moving, in long time scales, the land can also move, uh, move in a vertical direction. So, for example, if there is a sediment deposit in the fossil region, that itself can uh, change the water depth and increase the system of sand. And in regions with, in regions with a strong groundwater depletion, that can lead to compression and that can subside the land. So, that can in turn be rise of. You know, uh, if the relative sea level will go after the land is outside. So then, if there is a lot of water loss from a glacier, that can change the mass in that region, which in turn can affect the uh, gravitational, net gravitational force and the rotation effects at that particular location. So all these factors can contribute to the system side, and that in case, the data measured by the IEP includes the contribution from all of this. 
But in our situations, like uh, the data mentioned by satellite, for that we can uh, model the neighbor tail model, which will not include only these two packets, satellite and uh, the since you know, change we want. SSH is the shortcut for uh, C subside. So, C subside is the uh, value that we measure at a particular time, and C level rise in the of the period time here. So, we are talking about 10 or 100 years and how much C level will change from uh, the initial time to the final time. So here is our example for uh, the data measured by satellite, and here is a schematic of uh, the technique behind how the satellite measures the piece of time. So it sends uh, raw signals and measures the timing of travel, and then if the signal is high, the travel time will be shorter. So based on that, we will you know, estimate the advantage of the signal. And there are different things defined based on reference level. So if it is covered based on the theory, it's called dynamic versus topography. And if it is based on the mean C surface, it is the mean state of the C surface over a long period, then that is called a C level analogy. So the data set that we are recommending for you to use. The variable will be going to be dynamic or the dynamic or so that part is not here. So this satellite data is available from 1990 onwards, and what you see here is the trend for different uh, time periods. The first one shows that for 1990 to 2006, the second one shows for 2007 to 2020. And the third one shows for the uh, entire period, 1993 to 2020. So, basically, highlights for a different period, the signal can either go up or go down. It is not like the signal is going up all the time. 
and if you look at the the uh, period of 1990 you can see that all the downtown sports are all the Gulf of Mexico and the U.S. East Coast. And this is one of the reasons the focus area for this particular uh, project is going to be the Gulf of Mexico and the U.S. East Coast. So we see the package data for Gulf and we use all the spatial data from uh, satellite observations. What is the compared to them? But there is one issue here uh, because the time gauge is uh, referenced to the local level, but the satellite measurement is because of the geo. So the mean level is different between these data sets. So you have to connect those two in order to compare them. The way you do that is take a common period. So here, for example, 1993 to 2012, uh, and find the mean volume for that period, and remove that mean volume from each time stream. So then you bring it to the common problem set. That is what we did here. That's why the volumes are from uh, 0 point, minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 here, instead of six or seven meters that we can see there. So here you can see that uh, once you take the Target that are only, uh, only the only features from the dynamic part and the thermal form part, then that compared very well with the satellite data. So uh, the black line shows the target data and the red line shows the target that from the satellite observation. So these are the two data, many data sets that we recommend for you to use this product. So there is a data source uh, that is a new model models. I'll uh, show you an example, but we are not providing any data from new models from all sides, but you can find the data and use it if you would like to. So the new model models used to be pretty expensive to run, especially it covers the entire globe. And the panel that you see to the left is the local solution model, which is one degree. One three point that every one is like that. And the one to the right is a 10 kilometer process model. And you can see the 10 kilometer model solves the details like uh, ADs and associated calculations much better than that belongs to the game. So these type of models are available for last uh, four or five years. Uh, you can have multi decade, multi century simulations that these uh, kind of models can be used for uh, any IDs kind of reports. Uh, how we so these models are configured for the entire globe, and you can run it for projection simulations. Like you can specify what amount of the information you be uh, you're testing, and then you can run it for uh, one set of like 20 or 100 or even more than that. So then you can see set different scenarios, uh, various levels of greenhouse gas emission, and see how what will be the lower and upper bound of CO rise or any other parameters that you're interested in? Okay, that is uh, uh, some means that would take in data, the satellite, ultimately data, and the uh, uh, model data. So now I am trying to connect these data sets and some additional data sets with uh, two main challenges for the population. The first one is uh, predicting uh, sea level rise. So basically, you know, the target data from 1900 all the way to 2021, and the satellite data is available from 1993 uh, to the most recent time. So you can employ these data sets and also the additional data sets to see. Uh, so, which geographic location the signal is rising faster? Is that particular region has any unique uh, uh, unique aspects like uh, population density, uh, economic activities, or infrastructure, uh, physical facilities, for example, uh, those uh, energy plants, and uh, those kind of facilities need to be protected from the study of uh, water hazards around the way. So, you have to plan certainly for those established. So use these data sets in relation to the additional data sets and see how the signal price is going to impact uh, the Gulf force and the local uh, use force. And the second 
second part is communication with the end users. That was very much better, yeah, that's also very important. And you need to have a very nice system, very important system. It always depends on how you train and communicate to the person that you're talking to. So that part is also important. And as soon as there, we have a big sense of time when this time is only a function and you can uh, build on the answer. So, the first data set is the computer data set that I showed you here. So, I think all these instruments will be available on our uh, page. And this is provided by the operator sensing and uh, uh, the business of the and there are multiple methods to download this particular data. So I will show one example with the, uh, the Python API. So if you have a photo, if you have a photo on our uh, supermarket base, uh, this is what I need to do. Basically, I will install uh, the component as API. The this test will work fine. I invested in the number of And uh, this will actually download the data set for the PA that you want. So basically, um, you can use the API and then specify what uh, those you have asked you and what something and time you want to get the data. So this is for the uh, girl find you process here. The download of the here. here. And the time where you're hiding, uh, this is the most reason that, that you can get. Uh, so, it will be a uh, tool. So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, the Nexium data format. The open data set will be available in the Nexium format. But uh, now there are a lot of components available online. So, these are a couple of examples one for the MATLAB and uh, uh, MATLAB now are making support for the uh, data format, so it's pretty straightforward. And Python also has a lot of telephone material on the moment. Here is one example. So I think uh, Ian can uh, help in the various state of the world uh, Python. The second data set is a dynamic data set. Uh, the raw data is actually very difficult to handle because there are missing data uh, periods and more inconsistent between sessions, and there are a lot of difficulties like that. So, that you know, uh, very many of these time gates, 66 time gate sessions are the lowest here, 66 of them, source, uh, and the raw data is and all these data sets are available from 1900 all the way to 2021. So here is the publication related to the data set, and here is the data itself. And this data is in MATLAB format as a dot .mat file. And they also provided some MATLAB uh, programs to handle the data. And they have several different variables. And the variable of the here is the M was here, so I am here. This is the bonds. These are only the bonds from the open population and which bond. If you are interested now, then you like, uh, uh, can also take a look at that. So I am doing a review. One comparison between these steps, for example, like uh, each region's uh, the time gate and solid and it is well. And this region is that is the well. So if you want to compare it between those two, then as I mentioned earlier, you need to bring it down to the same reference set. The way you do that is take a common period, and the recommended period is 99 to uh, 2012. Compare the mean for that particular period and subtract it from a uh, certain time period. So now we need to make that sets. Uh, so the first one is uh, the census data. Obviously, you can figure out the voltage density and uh, uh, associated areas like age group. And so you could also look at uh, which density uh, people are moving to. Even if the population density is not high right now, the recent trends and all that, a lot of people are moving to that particular area. So all these information is available online. And the American community survey basically shows the uh, the comprehensive data on population and housing. 
and there is a uh, doubly and state wide economic data from uh, ERA4. And the vertical snap I'm showing you that is basically you have a really high resolution at the bottom of everything, and then you project close here, you're going up where you want, it might going to be the new one level, like that. So this is one such of the data that is very high resolution. And if you want to use similar visualization tools, then this could be a uh, wonderful resource. And NASA actually have a web page where they listed many such data sets, which is very helpful for looking at the serial chain. So basically, you can go to this page and uh, type in some variable name for our site. Then you can get a list of data sets to directly download from that site. And so every fossil state now publishes uh, fossil oscillates in mass points. So this is government say numerical data. So all subjective points like what is the plan for the next five years, next ten years, which we can say you know the biology and what's the very scientific way for that. And this is very interesting and uh, very resourceful, and people get a lot of. Uh, Ideas for data like graphics. Some of them actually have really nice graphics to illustrate the, the importance of a specific tool. So, with that, I think I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's a good to see yeah. everybody. Uh, I want to uh, maybe take this out of the abstraction of the very challenging problem that I know and talk a little bit about the midpoint event. So, I want to talk about the next big visualization. So, you know, we kind of constructed this as a uh, kind of a waypoint along the way of developing your project. It's a long project that you can sometimes get lost along the way. So, I encourage you all to. Um, and think very hard about what's an achievable project to work on and, and where to take that, and then this will be toward that end. So, we're going to have a midpoint contest. So, we're going to be submitting what I call the graphic. It's going to be very broad, and probably that. I'll define what I mean exactly by that uh, here in the slide. And so, we're going to submit this by the end of the day, and it's going to be more than And then we'll have a midpoint event that'll be online a couple of days later. So we'll have the top three visualizations that are coming in for graphics there in the um, So we'll get prizes. This will just be a nice thing that you can have on the calendar. But it's like, all right, we're trying to make a successful project. We have many weeks in the future, but halfway along the way, we want to have enough results that we can visualize, make sort of an evocative display that's committing some of our results so far. So what's permitted is you can have uh, what I call compound graphics. So this is like having a figure that maybe has a different cell display inside it, a different source. Like you can have bar graph on one part, you can have scatter plot on another. So don't make it too dense. We'll go over some uh, uh, guide, guide, uh, guidelines for that as we go along here. But uh, you can have a compound graphic. You can have very short animations. That's what we have to really interest in short animations in the past. Also, very short captions. So it's meant to be self contained in the sense that this information. Thank you. 
Moscow in the early 1800s. So, yeah, this large, seemingly invisible army of thinking about half a million people uh, marched all the way from Paris to Moscow. And uh, by some estimates, maybe 400,000 people died along the way, uh, directly from his army, probably many worse than that, three more. Um, that were directly involved. So there's a the visual animation here is got a kind of and bar that's going up and that's kind of demonstrating the size of this force and it gets split and then recombined then it gets to Moscow and the winter hits and then the black is the coming back. So the width of this bar in a way like curve is meant to convey the total size of this force and how much it was there, how much friction there was along the way. Another one, this isn't a particularly good visualization, we'll see here in a moment, but this one may be equally famous. This is, uh, was uh, one of the first major uh, attempts at uh, epidemiology, you say. So there was a major cholera outbreak. This is in uh, uh, London. And so we're trying to decide, well, why are people getting cholera? Their theory was at that point. There was a fellow named John Snow, or I guess he was an orphan, but he was a, um, you know, a polymath at the time, a real scientist work. And so he decided he was going to go track the cases where people dying from cholera. The father done on the neighbor attack. And he found that they seemed to be concentrated around the particular pumps. So he had water pumps. Sanitation wasn't really a thing, certainly nothing like it is now. And so he was able to identify this particular pump that is the source of the outbreak, they took the handle off. It actually, the outbreak was already naturally been linked, but it seemed to have been finished off. Correct. That's the it's somewhat apocryphal tale, yeah. but it's illustrative nonetheless, right? So we have um, uh, cholera is still actually a really important and, uh, topic, so it's actually related to the topic of 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 Coastal large water events like in Haiti and the Netherlands. Very uh, topical and related to this current topic of the day. So, uh, what makes a good visualization? So, there's a formal criteria you can take on this you know, that's, uh, that's been established over time. And it's really related to thinking about the like a grammar. You know, I'm speaking to you right now. Ideally, grammatically correct, in a particular grammar from a particular language. Your language may actually vary from mine, but there's a grammar that's been developed for graphics. And so I heard your paper is very well written. Very easy, uh, like it's not a Sunday morning meeting. Uh, but it tries to lay out the formal criteria for which you graphics. And that's what I'm going to speak here to talk a little bit about, and then that will formalize our discussion with Ronnie speaking as we go to the mid to the so there are some criteria that have been laid out that we can really think about statistically in the professor and staff department. Um, so uh, that we can statistically think about graphics. So we think about data, variables, algebra, scale, statistics, geometry, coordinates, aesthetics. Those are all just words at this point, so I'll substantiate them with an example in a moment. But these are the criteria that we want to think about when we're developing graphics. You know, they just make a plot and hope. Or what resolution do I have? Or down in the middle of seconds, something like that. 
And then it's adding a problem. So it's not like, I'm going to make a bar, bar plot. Great. That's really good. It's a really good at judging rectangular areas as opposed to circular areas. But they made a lot of the questions for what's that choice. There's a lot of uh, white space. There's a shadow. Bars are really small. Colors are really graph, right? We can make this much easier graphs, a lot more boxes, about the underlying content, and making it a small set of choices. And then there's another one I'll just call it in here. Uh, it is we expand to a variety of errors here. So sort of something about population size versus population growth. So hopefully you mentioned the fact that you have a, a natural structure associated with a map, right? So that is gone. The scales are also weird. Like why is it in the kind of common kind of industries like software defaults that kind of run them up, right? We have this geometric issue that would be related to that coordinate. Like, why are we not finding a set of map? Right? We have setting choices for the board. Why is it a circle? And why is the circle so large? And how are we doing this by having an alphabetical map? Like, why am I having the names sort of sensible um, to be wrapped in the board? Things of these things. So, these are how we're making these kind of things that is what we're Good luck. I hope you're able to come up with something. I look forward to seeing your submissions here in a few weeks. And, uh, I will also use probably all of you now. So we had a yeah, we've had a lot of information thrown at you, so we want to take a quick break and see if there are any questions. Um, uh, if there's any questions online, you can go ahead and pay them, and then we still have some more uh, presentations. But Thinking about uh, either section that we covered. Yeah, in fact. So, so the C11 drives visual impacts the social regions, starting and back to the location of the network. So, with those, I can work on those kind of works and impact the community. Yes, so the, the question was about scope because the low rise can go you know, rivers and stuff like that. Um, where, where do you focus or where are the limitations? Uh, I would say, yes, you, you know, if anything follows, any flooding caused by sea level rise is fair game. So, yes, <laughs> like it, uh, if there's a wild storm in Manhattan, Montana and there's flooding there, that's not really under the purview of the challenge. Uh, it has the, the the impact has to be related to sea level rise, and if you can justify that relation, then you agree. That was a great question. Um, and, you know, feel free to jump in if you want to add anything else. Uh, let's see, online. Any questions online? Yes, question number eight. How large was <laughs> how large how large is the city, the community that you're focusing on is the city but your team. Um, I would say that it would be significant enough that they've had to be impacted enough that your analysis would be warranted. So, uh, if there's an island out there with only one person living on it, maybe not focus on that. Um, you know, there's there's probably a better community out there that you can be part of. So, small town, state, yes, size, any size community. And, and you know, you might still have to mention. So, for example, I might be a community of small size, but you can look at many dimensions, things to be very 
interesting. I'm going to to be, well, this have a, have a look at uh, one particular site of the machine, but it's geographically distributed. So there's <laughs> you know, occupations or some kind of function that's going to be doing the same thing, but independent locations. So that's the interesting. So how are they not impacted by the price? So there's many different ways that big communities is grouping sets of people with sets of functions. So
but you don't reinvent any wheels. Um, and then Dr. Powell's going to go over some uh, helpful tools that that tools that you can utilize. Uh, so there's one more question. Yeah. And then we'll look at the online question after that. Uh, this should be back call. Yes. So, we can also do the subject. So, uh, of the like, should be a presentation. So in that case, we showcase the argument of our side of the and it not be the Uh, mostly by uh, researchers and uh, 
time we'll see all the best nice locations and research. But again, this is a bias. In a sense, this is just for us community building this kind of uh, simulation uh, uh, better competition platform. But it all represents a uh, big kind of market. So there will be a, a lot of uh, users. Um, you have to do that. You have to do that. I'm sorry about it. Um, we all have this uh, video shared, so you can probably get a trade in. Um, we hosted this uh, our best um, last scale spectrum analysis um, workshop. This is actually a, a tech talk given by Vin. Uh, uh, he's now a some professor at Manhattan University. And uh, I will share the link of the video here. If you have your access to the slides, you can check out the video. Um, so, again, if you are a user, I don't think that R cannot be used for this communication. Feel free to use it. And now the relevant uh, work I did myself is uh, doing this remote system analysis. With the cloud region in China. And we were beginning with smart spectral data analysis. For smart spectral data, if you have a data set from Salaman, the data that you're getting, you're getting is very likely to the hyper spectral data. In the sense that for the regular image you're taking with your camera, you have all these three channels are in you. Um, if you have you know, a hyper spectral camera, which is carried by satellite nowadays, you can have a camera taking pictures and flat for channels. The even channels, the way how the reflected sunlight or the camera light are reflected on the surface, so we did. If you have an you know, on sea surface, the um, so reflected channel in the water will solve the water will be solving a lot of infrared uh, radiation and uh, the red matter, uh, you will you will reflect more more towards the violet and blue. Uh, so that's why you see uh, so you can use any information you can do all the detection without using any measurements. That is exactly what this is technology is. So they are doing some uh, index manipulation by taking the deeper data from the bandwidth they can directly see what's this terrorist kind of vegetation. It's water. So it's a pretty powerful way to do this scanning, and uh, there are a lot of research in this area. Probably. I'm not sure about the particular depths that we have. It's, the depths that we have is going to be more in general. It's kind of that will give you quite more information about the scheme. So this is the one of the uh, books in the encyclopedia, encyclopedia for all the processing published in 2018 or 2019. My friend and I, we lost a contribution, a uh, solid contribution to this inside the video. And the, the thing that this thing is, this book is so expensive, you might really purchase this. You know, I take the price online, it's one thousand four hundred dollars Just for the book. A lot of it is my purchase, but I don't see it anywhere. So, what can I go to PDF? I don't know if I can share it with you all. But again, it's not, it's just like a pretty there, and just no one else will be reading. Um, so, what can federal analysis uh, do? The set federal analysis is like a combination of three dimensions plus one, so three plus one dimensions. So, we do any reporting like a video, you're taking a two dimension because you're two dimensional. Your camera can only project one dimension to the two dimensional for CCD, CCD, CCD. And then you get a video reported in a sequence of two images. You get a Two plus one dimension. Uh, with even better cameras, other you know, new uh, sensing technology, you can get three information. Then you have a time sequence. So you have three plus one dimension. So with this information, this time information, you can do a lot of things. If you are familiar with any you know, mechanical simulations or simulations like you get from telephone, they have three dimensional simulations. You're doing like three plus one simulations, three dimensional space. 
and then you have one that looks all time. You have a visual condition, you involve your uh, you know, solving your type of equations, you can involve each other, next time, time set, so you get a sweet class one. So you have the full features. You don't only really know your number, you don't only really know the current status, you also know the history and the future. And the whole purpose of building all these numerical models and building this data uh, models is to make you capable of seeing things in the future. So, just you know, when we talk just give you the data, um, that's the data already taken, either historical data or current data, you can get in a stream, data stream, you can get a lot of data. You can do data exploration, just, just look at the data, look at the patterns, do some very simple visualization, you can see some patterns directly without doing any variable. That's what we call. It's all the way that has to be in that sense. You can do the same thing for certain So, the remaining other things you can do with uh, all the data you have, you can try to figure out the state of defense. Some error, something happens, people are affecting memory uh, regions, and that's the dependence of the uh, The migration population can easily be affecting the long term, the migration, and also the migration different term. Uh, you know, species will cause the most disease. And there's a whole lot of same interaction and association are also something relevant. If you try to figure out how one place's variation is changing, it will have this other area. Uh, but again, you cannot do this just two kinds of current data. You probably want to look at historical data, which is like map of slices of this slide. I'm talking about hypersense. This is the time, but every type of size is a three dimension. You look at every type of size, you can see just like an intercept, how many more can intercept? We get this a hybrid space, right? You are passing through three dimension class, not that much time. You are the one that see everything because you have a tail. You know, we don't have a superpower to go in the future, but we have a superpower to go in the past, but you don't have a tail. All the computational technologies and visualizations. All the tools will give us how fast to go back in time, do kind of things, then we can predict things in the future. So, this is a very powerful uh, tool that some of you might, be find, it, might find it useful to person. And uh, I used it myself a couple of years to develop a very simple interface to study the time, time lapse of the loss of macro life in the set. Um, you know, if you go there, there are a couple of examples. This is just one of the examples showing on the website. And it's very nice. You can directly see how things are changing. Just like going back in time. You probably have seen those time lapse videos on YouTube, depending on time. But for this one, you can put it in a particular region. And you can make a new It's really, really hard to play. And this is way better than generating. So generating that, you know, that's realistic. That's a real data. We are based on some of the images. So talking about geospatial um, uh, analysis, something you have to understand. We need a process everywhere we go. Whenever you want to put it everywhere, you know, want to put a landmark, you need a location, land to land. Uh, there are a lot of ways to project it, but for the surface, the surface is a certain theoretical, mathematical. You wouldn't be able to do everything map one that's not map without tweaking and uh, changing the, uh, the, the structure, the internal measurements, the internal structure for the point. Because Increasingly, intrinsically, we, we have permissions for the monitoring. So, uh, there are multiple ways that you do it. You can map your circle point to a cylinder, map it to different shapes. But you, you'll see the way how you're going to map it will change the scale. Sometimes, you know, what kind of uh, mapping you're doing, the size will come with the different measurements. The size of the volume system because you didn't call it from dx to one to du db. The dx time du dy will be different from dx time db. And there will be some scaling factor. The scaling factor for the gauge, where how for the gauge factor, we needed to figure out that. So, fortunately, for a lot of Python and other libraries, all this mapping between one more system and another more system is not provided. Uh, but you, you need to be aware when you start using those numbers. For example, the, the easiest way to get Position for the, on, on the map is the back to mount. But those are degrees, you know, the units. It can also just handle it and keep 
tell people that's my uh, error because the one different way of measuring things. So you should be careful about the scaling factors and how that may be affecting your measurements. You want to consider the area of others. Oh, I'll just comment about mapping. Again, you know, if you take any uh, digital geometry, you can see, you know, this state that I saw, the surface itself is flat. It's not more than just a flat surface, it's just the curve. But intrinsically, it's flat. The intrinsic curvature, the remap tensor, is But for, for the sphere, some of there were some intrinsic curvatures uh, into this uh, on, the, on the surface. But there's no uh, no way that you can you can make this of nice because there's intrinsic curvatures. So that's why you're projecting and all this is next. That's the ultimate of the problem. I mean, whenever you do the projection, there are some deformations. There are some hidden points like here. If you do the projection and all region, uh, there will be some uh, singular points. So you have a target. So let's just forget about this particular point. Let's do the projection. Then you can have a whole separate. So a lot of things like this suddenly you are getting this, you know, this point system. But, but again, you know, Fortunately, this whole library is obviously kind of natural. Just in general, in your mind, we start dealing with surfaces, areas, we do this kind of measurements. This is far more important. Several dependencies, also something I just mentioned, something happening in one area or behind another area, how this dependency will be, uh, could be analyzed. There are also a lot of things we can do to understand how you know, uh, the variation of one particular region will be affecting another. There are several dependencies and temporal dependencies. Um, and uh, those also can be put into the uh, installation. Uh, uh, so, so there's there's another thing you can call it a study, yeah. particularly you know, for when you compare the, uh, the sea level effect from one region to another region, if you already get the um, uh, sea level rise map from different areas, you can do a similarity or association comparison. Uh, like the one to the left here, you can easily see visually, and so give you a high strength because one of the, the structure of one area is very similar to another area. Uh, but for the one to the right here, uh, you can see there are a lot of nice things. So there are multiple ways to do this, and uh, I just want to point out here the multiple things you can do with this. This is just, you know, how I show you all uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, this is not a correlation. Um, to um, you know, understand the spatial distribution of certain patterns. Uh, all this, you know, all the analysis uh, I just mentioned previously, you can use a, uh, there is one called the Pi style, and GeoPanda is not one, uh, which is a very powerful toolkit and you leverage to do all the geo state analysis. Uh, GeoPanda, as you can see, is geo about pandas. If you are doing anything, in data science, we can pass the pandas will be the very first certificate of destructive of each tool. And uh, the geo is adding some extra features in this time. So it's adding some extra columns to describe your data. So if you look at the structure of geo pandas, uh, oh, okay, this is now, I'll get into the detail about geo pandas in a second, but this is another packet. It's for the high cells, high, high cells, stable, not stable. But this will be doing a lot of uh, things I just mentioned previously. You can look into the documentation for that. So think I'll see that more. We won't have time to go through all those. Um, the, the beauty of all these packages, one of the beauties, is that they have very, very little documentation. Can you start with people? We can learn this just if you don't need to you know, be expert on the GIS systems. You need a degree of geography. Some common sense plus some program skills to get you started with people. Get into the libraries. Okay? Those are these to, um, to launch some uh, quick start uh, to get started on this uh, on this uh, So Geo Pandas, let's get back to Geo Pandas. It's a uh, again it's a compilation of the pandas plus other lines of the which is used to store all the shape files to you know give you some information about the, the geo distribution, some location. Um, and then there is another um, uh, they are not for file access to, to get a set of your shared um, uh, files and other, other files relevant to your special analysis. And then you have a building library, and the whole matlog, which is a very popular class library for plotting. And it's a building connection to matlog, and so you can plot out without you do the transaction yourself separately. 
And uh, again, if you're familiar with Paris, so we have a depth, depth of current much smaller than this hexagonal pair, you know, actually it's from very, at very top level. If you look at the depth of current, it's just like a very doomable Excel one, not small as but you know, again, it's a bit more than just a simple Excel file because it has a building structure for which you manipulate just data just through some forming models, but you simulate, you can treat that as a depth on your Excel. But GeoPandas has an extra mantle columns describe the geometry of the You can define points, you can define distance, which is something you need to have it, you know, one by one. But here you can define the patterns and other building chains. If you have an tree that one of the rows here is, uh, is one of the representing probably one of the cities in the population, and the geometry of it is putting the last last to there during the location. And then you have another check file that you can be on this side. It will send the area of the location and also the check file of people see. So you have a lot of geometry to make stored inside this particular database. That's not that. So it's a file. It's a data file. It's a 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 file. And then you can do the tensing with the time systems. These are, this is a table list of all the you know, very powerful um, uh, geographic libraries in Python and you can each of them separately. So again, Python is a very popular uh, language for data scientists and it has multiple libraries, very, very powerful libraries in average. The ecosystem in Python. Uh, you know, depending on how you look at it, this is just one of the slides I've got from a very uh, popular slide set. Based on, on Python, you have some uh, low level libraries, you know. It's very high performance, it's very efficient. If you know, this here is uh, a race analysis. You have Spire providing interface for which you can write Puma, it's just like a uh, high charm or IntelliJ or whatever, or whatever you use. Uh, we have code and some other things. If you know both, it's, it's, it's used a lot by the scientists. Now, on top of that, you have some libraries based on not high and it's on the libraries. And you have sci fi, sim fi, and macro level software line from transit. On top of that, you have even high level uh, models or modules and libraries can be replicated to your application. Very first one, samples, which would really provide a lot of this specific amount of time. It's very similar to R in many ways. So a lot of R libraries require responding names, functions, and in sets of models. And the high ball and those are very popular deep learning network uh framework that is machine network as you use. So I could learn with Zilla toolkit if you want to use if you want to use that's uh the data science list. Uh this uh you know machine model, machine model with the past. Network access is for analytics. So I list all of them, you know, with a little more details. Some of them I even put links here, like the pandas have some short tutorials about pandas here, and can get there, try some out. Map probably is used widely in the Python community, and also another one in network access, for graph analytics. If you want to represent your data, not in the panel, but in, the, say, graph. Nodes and works in nodes and uh, edges and map all together to form a structure, data structure. Um, so, graph analysis could be very useful for this kind of analysis. So, sans mode, uh, models and uh, I just have a mix here, but here is another one for scientific learning that you can get started. And the tensor flow, again, I have this part of the slide that I, I, I was. Was used for my HTMRC models. You can get there and check out uh, some of the heroes and also instructions how to get started to run your code directly on this. Our is the one of the things hosted at HTMRC, how much risk you can get inside. And this is a single one for PyTorch, and Keras is just the high level library. Now it's for those PyTorch and TensorFlow, which is quite amazing. Uh, so, 
the best because you know I was told to talk a bit more about the net value of system because we are imagining suddenly our data might be coming from some uh, descriptive uh, text information that we want to parse and analyze. Now with the chat PT and a lot of tools uh, to help you to do net value of system, uh, this is simply be something you want to get started. I know there are a lot of policies, a lot of discussion about how to restrict and how to, you know, uh, again, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, get into the land because it's your own design here on the campus. But you can now think about the value tools. Uh, to me, for high level policies, those should be acceptable. But for low level policies, you're taking any productive level policies, I think. You shouldn't be using those tools because the market itself is not the best amount. We don't want to use SAMP as a, a tool to help you how to get your products done. But, but again, you know, for which is products, uh, it's probably a good way to learn how to use it. Uh, I you know, skip this one because it, you know, everyone probably already learned a little bit more about those. And for uh, well, that representing the amount of what you do, the first thing you do is just to parse the handles, pass the whole thing. Deeper text and try to understand semantics, how to do that. This is from the stand standpoint of the traditional net maps, it's not from the chat It's probably the same internally, but there are already tools like now TK, that language took it, now TK, which is several doing all this already very efficiently, very uh, For the cloning path approach, it's kind of you just text your model, put your data in it, it trains a transformer model, which will try to generate some for the best on generative uh, AI uh, architecture. And um, this is basically what's a large map, map, large map model is. They get your text and shuffle in your words, everything you to sort of embed in the space. So you have tokens representing every word, every you know, the same word will have a sample. You draw shuffle all your words into a certain certain way. And then it will pass into micro values, and then it will try to generate some predictive uh, some actual so called tokens that should be appear next to your input sequence. So, so you can be generating all this word by word, not sent by sent, but not sent anything. Of the science. Just understand the probability that which word should appear, what's likely to appear after this long sequence of science we provide previously. So it's quite amazing to see how this thing works and it's generating optimal super long sequence that I'm happy in. So no ground mistakes, and it also makes sense to the many tests. So this is a large time model of class, and uh, we are. Already here, and the Lama, I know, is the methods trying to gen, uh, uh, train a new version of Lama. I'm telling I'm using Lama too myself. I know some researchers on campus are using different models. Uh, Chang 54, the Oracle also released their Chang 54 Plus, and uh, I'm a subscribe user for that. It's really, really powerful. I have really checked, right? I mean, my whole Chang 50 app yet, but I'm going to do that first. So, Lama 2 is about to change the last step. So the reason is that's the very first Lama model really well, unless you're curious, otherwise you can use it for free, download it. That's a, the Lama is a very convenient to train your own model. That's, so that's the, the model I'm myself getting pretty familiar with. The main drawback is it's crazy. But unfortunately, there are a lot of less development to reduce the size of this uh, model. Large line models may load it and run it on your computer without even feeding, uh, which is quite amazing. Um, so, so now to currently provide methods, they provide human feedback during the train so that you, they can fill out some bad words uh, by providing human feedback during the training process, which was not the case previously. But since now two methods that are put into all this, now it seems to be a common practice. Uh, there have been some national policies in the US and in other, many other nations that are trying to do something similar. They want to train your own bad model, uh, that might not be more, uh, I would say, uh, I'm not sure what the right word in English, but 
to be more so it's, it's, it's not against the strategy. So that it's it's it's, it's combining each other's strategy of values. So I still have to come on this. So for so lab level models, uh, there are a lot of ways to use uh, again I will see you have time, the resources to train a model from scratch. So you want to come back nine million dollars and teach some somehow people come about a hundred million dollars to train a model from scratch. That's definitely not a thing we want you all to do here. But there is something if you have resources and you interest, uh, once you can find is to collect some data that are relevant to the people field. Clean up your data, make sure that it's a clean without any, you know, or some dubious information. As you are made a model, make a lab, a large model, and import it, and then use your data as a to feed into your own training process. So now the model itself has an intrinsic, uh, all the internal logic arrangement, it's on the about all the words, how the words should be pursued at the future. Now, it's some actually information that you're writing for your people that may, you're already enforcing this actual connection between all some keywords uh, in your particular field. If you are doing your second analysis, if you know data or a lot of the language based information, strictly information, you can add this to your model and then your training this. It will do a super transfer. Take if you're reading the existing ways from the black, black bank of world and um, Treat all the way so that all the information you are in your own data will be covered. The model likes it doesn't have a lot of memory, but those ways to be tricked, that makes your crop will be much, much simpler. If you don't train your model, if you can be allowed to, um, so you yeah, allowed to for very, very specific tasks, you need to tell the clear what you want. But I'll be telling it with certain data, with certain, with certain, certain pattern, your crop could be very simple. Just for one word, two words, three something to get it, start doing something you want. So that's a really powerful way to get the model trained and simplify your prompt. So again, um, Jason Wong from VIA just you know just gave a presentation about this his opinion about Luma. That natural language, language of speaking, English, Chinese, any language, as long as you get trained with that one black line model, it's a program language. It is it's a program language. So in the near future. Even now, sometimes if you have a very clear mind, you know what you're saying, or you can just write down in a, in a certain manner, your lab itself is a program now. You can use that to ask the chat GPT in general, you know, pass from your lab to our lab to see what you have already done that, right? You can get a SQL or JavaScript and pass it to the I'm doing that myself. Not to feel ashamed about it. I'm past program, but I like the way how chat GPT is working. So by tweaking that, you can. You can do a fine tune language model and to generate different languages. Now, if you have a new language, fine, just you know, create many, many examples and, and fit into the model training. You can your, put your lab code into your own lab coding uh, device and can help to generate code in your language. So it's doable. People are doing that. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's working. It's, 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 it's fine. So, I won't get into details about that, but I just want to get back to the general AI seven. I think it's kind of important for you all to understand. So that's the uh, general uh, some, uh, common sense here. I just based on my understanding. We want you all to use it, but make sure you cite your work. Make sure you really refer your generated work in a certain way, so that we all, you know, we have a fair background. Uh, we don't disempower you. This we don't say. Uh, for, for people, uh, we, we don't forbid you all using this, uh, this uh, general AI tools, but, uh, but be careful about using those in a, in, in a very constructive way. So there are some other resources that you all can refer to and about general integrity and other things. Um, lastly, I think I'm running out of time almost, but I want you all to get familiar with the technology as well. It's really, really important if you are going to do anything big, anything requires some content of how to use those. Those are free for everyone here. Yeah, have no one else that is having interesting. Send it on the You can directly, you know, talk to any professor on campus. They can help you to spawn your account to get started with all these systems. Now, look at those systems. These are, uh, we have like four, five, six systems there already. Look at them, okay. Can someone guess how big is the memory, you know, how much memory is this one? It's just one computer, 
Why so? You know how to marry someone? Being married. Someone, some, any guess? One pair of us? Is it? Two? How about three? One door has three pair of pair of us to marry. How about this question? It has three pair of us to marry. I'm being no. So if you want to live with really big girls, that's audio for a lot of stuff. And you can do so free. Uh, so just go ahead and just apply some of the concepts. Uh, get started. So we're not getting to learn, you know, how to use the machines. So again, it's a shared system. So you need to learn how to use them. You need to feel comfortable, get yourself comfortable to use those small interfaces. You need to learn how to sell your jobs. So today, um, you know, I will not time to get you all started on machines, but there are a couple of here. You can start and apply the time. You can put my name, Matt ID, uh, as your sponsor if you want. And you can just put in this time in the competition as you are probably called and whichever is specific. If something matches, it's a required. We all post this to many panels, I believe. We all post it to many It's already there. So, yeah, on campus, if you go under dev sets, you have the log in the ERC is the top there. Then, any. Any questions for Dr. Powell before we move on? Okay. Uh, like, uh, how, how do you like men like, I'm sure when we was change for changing how it's do you speech at any school? Like, what, what is the relationship between this school and the role in this kind of so that's a good question. So the uh, James mentioned about the best, those are the best and raw material. The two that we put in here is to be like a you know, machine. Uh, in a sense that those two be used for generating some visualization, generating some visualization, carrying out some analysis. But how you link the data to the final variable and how to process it, that's your design. You pick out how you use those two. These are just down to some reckoning, just like data sources. Uh, James recommended some data sources, but there are more out So again, I recommend some better uh, tools here, but there are to be many others who might want to minimize. For so example, I, 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 I didn't talk about our best tools. So this could be a very powerful way to do geo analysis. Like, do you imagine like we can like find uh, QT dominant model using the given data sets to give like a uh, that's even the money for the data that we are providing is mostly numerical numbers and numerical uh, data numbers. Uh, those might not be an ideal uh, data for you to train a model, but uh, if you are going to grab some data set from some, from now X or some other uh, online website, you can download a lot of those chanting for certain for certain humans. You can probably train a model to do something about it. So the reason why is I mean, it's open because there are multiple ways to solve this kind of problem. You can, you can figure out where how to reach out to open, you know, to the public through this live and live model. And uh, it's, it's your choice. And how your information could be conveyed and uh, how you collect the data, collect information from the, from the public and do something more. You could probably provide a solution. You know, it might not be the deliverables that we are expecting here. Just give you the you don't need to have a pretty model to win this competition. Basically, you have many other choices. So if you have can figure out um, what the plan is on, many information to the public, and figure out how to collect the feedback from them, that's probably another way to look into this model. Thank you. So let me double check the online. No questions? Any other any other questions about the, the tools that you could use? And these are just suggestions um, based on what you want to analyze, you know, the process, the, the exact method of analysis will depend on, on your team's focus. Any other questions? All right. Okay, so let's uh, quickly review 
uh, today's insight will be put about the SRIs. Um, so the setting with these two main components, uh, creating the impact to see um, sea level rise and communicating those impacts uh, with end users, having to communicate to people, present that, inform people what actions they can take in a variety of actions. And uh, as we said seven times, it's very open ended, we encourage you to. to Figure out a community services infrastructure facilities for groups of these um, which are in that. And uh, by action, we'll buy space, so the site are open, infrastructure, habitats, economic financial risks, security and safety. So, so give them that, if you try and do what you can do for the audience. What are the tools that allow these metrics? Visualization you can use and develop. And what are your recommendations? So, these are the things you want to think about and training over your problem where you want to be. We talked about a number of methods. This is a second readings. I'll give you the floor on how to use to solve the problem. Value value in paper, model solutions to the long and particularly interested in the language of understanding means or is important in the problem, then it's And then in this voice sort of representation, it was dashboard is infographics, interactive visualization. You can explore the data and explore the conclusions. I want to reiterate something that um, some of you down said. We phrase it you know, in terms of you know, set, set a reachable goal for your project. So as if phrase that you don't like the perfection to become the enemy of the good. So try and find something achievable, reachable, and complete. But once you've done that, if you've got time, you can build on and extend and, and also learn from previous wins. So we've got a couple of links here, one of which is to um, last year's one page for last year's awards, which have shared links to presentations that the winners made. And also, also I highly recommend uh, experiences from the 2019 competition. Uh, which is uh, a presentation made after the event by the winner that year, Jibaka, who um, uh, talked about his approach to the competition. So, next steps for you um, look at the guidelines and the data sets are up there, join the office hours to consult the sessions if you wish, uh, submit to the midpoint competition if you wish. Uh, report deadlines on the fourth, the submission and the final presentations, final events back here in the community. So, and we're looking forward to um, seeing how you develop innovative ways to figure out this and represent this. So, here on Good Luck. And uh, are there any questions about logistics solutions? Competition for the How can we reach the team of can like uh, if, 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 if I like, need some help or some minute Is there any risk? So I mean, I, I would say come, you know, come to the uh, come to the session. So if there are, uh, we have the we have the office hours, and all this information is on is on campus. So we we have the office hours. Uh, we have a workshop, which is March seventh. Uh, on March.
Right. Right. So we have the office hours, uh, and we have have a rush. So I encourage you to you know, to join those. There, there's the help, uh, there's the help channel on the Discord that you can utilize. Uh, there's also uh, faculty out there. Uh, well, the the help channel will come towards uh, myself and, and the rest of the people at Cadence, and then we can help point you in a direction. But you know, if, if you have a specific uh, issue, you can speak with maybe like a faculty advisor. Um, there's Tutorials on the Tandis website. Uh, it depends on what your help you're looking for. Yeah. And, you know, uh, if you go onto our website, there's emails. You can always email me and ask that question. Is the, um, I know at the very beginning when we were registering, we were supposed to uh, like say who was our mentors. Is there any way that we can add mentors to take you out the accomplishment? Or is there like, or is, is there like, like I'm just here, like uh, in our document, we just credit like certain people that we're still. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Matthew. I mean, with the same, the same stipulations, so, so they have to agree to be the official. Thank you. I would say any help that you get, you can just cite, right? Like if you ask uh, Tech GPT for help, that's a second. But I mean, there are existing resources at the university that you can utilize. Um, and if you need help finding those resources, you can reach out to me. And I can point you in the direction. Any other questions? Well, you know, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, this information is online on the campus. You have access to that. If you're having difficulty accessing anything, please reach out to me. We also, I can also help with questions, um, point you in direction. And you have a, another question? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I can help you after this, and then uh, if anyone else has issues, you know, feel free to email me. Uh, my my information is on the website. Um, good luck. And remember, this this is not a, a sprint; it's a, it's a marathon, right? So take your time, think about it. thinking through a problem is half half the challenge. Thank you. I'm <laughs> 